I was sat there in my ordinary clothes and Brendan said to me that nah, I'm joking. But how cute is that? Look, fuck, it's brilliant, isn't it? What a day yesterday. Um, enough talk about Brendan Rodgers though for this moment in time because today it's time for another edition of Celtic Transfer Talk as it looks as though Celtic are poised to make yet another signing for their next target in the summer transfer window. Let's talk about that. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, it would be much appreciated and can I quickly say thank you all very, very much for 38,000 subscribers, we're over the line, it's now on the road to 39 on this jaunt to 40, but um, I couldn't appreciate you any more than I, than I already do, you guys are the best, you make the channel what it is and the support uh, over these last few weeks amongst the madness of what's been going on has been nothing short of incredible, so thank you all, you all are just fantastic beautiful human beings, as a certain individual would say. Very briefly, yesterday, fantastic day at Celtic Park as Brendan Rodgers was unveiled to Celtic fans for a second time um, in the last, what, seven years? Wow, he's back and he seems better than ever. Those press conferences yesterday were really, really good. Of course, we had the chance to speak to him at the fan media press conference, so if you haven't seen my video from yesterday, I couldn't suggest it enough to you. It's up there, it's live, it went late last night, um, and a lot of great comments from the manager in regards to moving forward as a club. So I, I can't help but kind of drill forward the same point that I kept saying in yesterday's video. I think now with Brendan Rodgers back, it's more about looking forward than looking back. Let's not go and dwell too much on his first tenure and the way that he left the club. Let's look forward. Let's think about what we can do as a football club to be bigger and better than we already are. And let's hope that Brendan Rodgers, with everything he said yesterday, can lead us there. One of the main things that Brendan spoke about yesterday was, of course, recruitment at Celtic and what's different this time round from his last spell at the club and how it's bigger and better now and how we need to upgrade our standards in, in, in regards to the quality of player we're signing. He wants to take us far in Europe. That is the next step to make Celtic um, a better football club. And to do that, he needs the backing, he needs the players, and he needs the recruitment to be right. And they spoke quite a bit about Mark Lowell, for example, yesterday, and what he's done since he's came into the football club. And obviously, that's going to be pivotal in, in regards to who we go and sign this summer window. So on that note, Celtic have reportedly agreed a fee for their next summer transfer target all the way from Melbourne City. So published last night across many different publications and of course reported first by Stephen McGowan. As always, Celtic have reportedly come to an agreement and agreed a fee for young Australian winger Marco Tellio. He is the next player on Celtic summer transfer list and many of the sources over in Australia confirming that the only things now left in Celtic's way to get the deal done is personal terms, the work permit, the medical, if all of that gets done, then Marco Tilio is set to become Celtic's second signing of the summer transfer window. It seems all the wheels are in motion, all the deals have been done, just the last wee bits and bobs, and he'll be the next signing for Brendan Rodgers. Of course, this follows on very quickly from the signing of Odin Thiago home. Um, business seems to be getting done quite quick, even with the departure and arrival of Ange slash Brendan over the past couple of weeks. I think we're looking at players here that are coming in so early that have been identified by guys like Mark Glowell, by the recruitment and scouting department, players who would have came in no matter who the manager was. I basically said all of this when we signed Odin Thiago home the other day, but I think we're looking at the same in a similar situation with Marco Tellio here. Um, I think that he's one that's been obviously highlighted by that, that, that team led by Mark Glowell, and he's someone who will be coming in now to be the second of our signings this summer. So very exciting, but let's talk a bit about the player himself. 21 years of age and already a three times winner of the Australian top flight. That's something that, of course, is very common with Celtic Football Club winning at such a young age. So many of our young players come in, they win titles after titles, 
cup after cup. Um, and that's obviously what's been happening for young Marco Tilio over, over in Melbourne City. But the right winger has had a fantastic start to his young career and is very entertaining by all accounts. It seems like he knows how to get the attention on the park. He gets eyes on him at all times and, and a right winger that would fit in incredibly well at Celtic. Last season in the 22-23 campaign, he racked up 31 appearances. 10 goals and 6 assists, he made it into the PFA A-League team of the season and also at international level, he's already got 5 caps for the Australian national side since making his debut early last year. He got selected for that World Cup side as well in Qatar of 2022, so he was over there with um, you know, the likes of Jackson Irvin, Aaron Moy, um, and he's he's obviously someone who's going to be a big star for them in the future. He didn't make any appearances at the World Cup, but five appearances since debuting for the Australian national side. It seems like things are going very well in a very young career for Marco Tilio. Now, even though he is a right winger, from all the reading that I've done so far, scouts look to have dubbed him as a very versatile player. Someone who can play in a number of positions, someone who can be used in many different roles over the park in an attacking aspect, um, and someone who does them all pretty well. So obviously when it comes to Celtic and it comes to Brendan Rodgers as well with the style that we've seen Rodgers play, that is very useful. Someone who can slip from the left to the right, maybe play in that number 10 if he needs to as well. It'll be very handy um, with him being able to do that. I was reading earlier on that you know he's effective on either wing as a 10 and even as a number 8. He's most commonly played as a left winger in recent times but arguably is most effective as a number 10 or a second striker. So you've got someone here who's a master at all attacking things. Um, you know, this is very interesting because right now we're in a position where Celtic have a lot of great attacking players in every area. You know, good right wingers, good left wingers, good strikers, good attacking midfielders. So to bring someone in who actually adds to all of those departments and can drop into any of them at any given time... It might be more suitable right now than rather than just signing someone who's exclusive to one area because we don't know who's leaving the club yet. So we're bringing in somebody here who can drop into all these different wee areas, do something for us, um, and, and that can be very handy if we, we keep a strong side. Apparently, he's really, really good at cutting inside from the wing, and that can be from the left inside or from the right inside. Both he's, he's apparently really good at, which is fantastic for a Brendan Rodgers winger when you think about it. You think back to the likes of, of Scott Sinclair, who was magic at being on that left-hand side and cutting in and, you know, popping off a shot or, or trying to make something out of it. He was brilliant at it. He'd done it a lot, and um, he was obviously our best winger when Brendan Rodgers was here. And, and I think that was, you know, the others on the other side, Forrest, Roberts, they were nowhere near as good as Sinclair because I don't think they were as good as cutting in as Sinclair. So if we're looking at someone here with Tellio who's, who's apparently incredibly good at cutting in and using his other foot or whatever, um, that'll be very good for a Brendan Rodgers style to, side. If you've seen any clips of him so far or watched any of his highlight packages, one thing that you will pick up on, talking about cutting in from the side and all the rest of it... Um, He's dribbling. Very, very impressive. He looks very comfortable, very confident at dribbling in tight spaces. Um, and he looks as though he's very comfortable carrying the ball as well. And he's got that kind of the ball glues to his feet sort of approach. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter the space he has, the time he has, or what pace he's going at. The ball will stay glued to his feet. And obviously in Scotland, that can be very handy when you're playing against hammer throwers week in week out and um, apparently deals with being roughed up quite well so it doesn't phase him too much he's dealt with it for the majority of his career so far over in australia and trust me if he's signing for us he'll have to deal with it even more over here in scotland if you want to learn so much more about the player i can't do anything more than point you towards this brilliant thread from aussie scout on twitter um, they've developed a, a very good understanding of the player and there's a lengthy list on him um, about every aspect of his game, everything that he does, a right good deep dive, statistics, videos, quotes, the whole shebang. If you want to go and learn more about Mark Cotillo, then what to do is head over to that thread on Twitter and you'll learn a hell of a lot about him. Overall, I think he looks a very exciting prospect. Um, I think he's someone who comes into this side and, and, and probably, you know, 
bring something else from the the wingers we already have on the right hand side. There's been criticisms of of, of players not being able to take on um the the defenders, maybe not being as good as cutting in. Um, so you know you're bringing in someone here who who seems to be comfortable with aspects of of the game like that, and I think that he can make a big impact if given the opportunities. So. He is reportedly going to be our second signing of the summer window. Everything seems to be in place, so hopefully a medical pass soon. Personal terms are agreed. I don't imagine that they'll be demanding too much. Massive opportunity to come to a club like Celtic over from Australia. So there's no exacts on the transfer figure right now. We don't know how much we'll be paying for the young man, but prospect, Melbourne City, City Group, etc., etc., probably be a decent enough wee fee. Um, but yeah, he could be the second signing of the summer window. Just before we finish up very quickly, it's another signing coming in before anyone leaves the club, so it is going to be interesting moving forward to see um, who leaves. Will the likes of Liel Abada leave, for example? Will we have more than enough options? Will we need to consider other options? Such a long window to go, but I'm glad that Celtic, st Celtic are starting off on this foot rather than the foot of losing players and then having to replace them. Look, we're going to be in a place now where if folk go out the door, we've done our work, we've done our business, and it's just about identifying what we need after that. Um, but yeah, that's that for today. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed. Enjoy your weekend. I'll be back on the channel tomorrow. Don't you worry. And uh, aye, I'll see you all next time.